Hello and welcome at ISOP Academy. In this video we will go through ISO Web Admin Basics, learn how to create new domain, users, set aliases or create groups and resources. First of all, to access your ISOP server web admin interface, go to your server IP address or hostname slash admin. That's the URL where your ISOP server is accessible. This is the login page of web admin. It's important to mention that there are three different user types in ISOP server. And although everyone is actually able to log into WebAdmin, only two of them actually have access to the settings. Those two are domain admins and administrators. As I've already mentioned in WebAdmin introduction video, depending on user type, you have access to different parts of WebAdmin. In this video, I will do all these demos as administrator of ISOP server. So let's start. Log in. And we are in. Once you are administrator, you can create new domain in ISOP server. To do so, go to plus sign menu right here and select new domain. Enter domain name. And click save. ISOP server will automatically trigger DNS validation tool which allows you to check whether all DNS records for this domain are set correctly. To get more information about DNS validation, I highly recommend to watch our video of ISORP Smart Discover and DNS configuration. Once we have checked our DNS records, we can close it. So, domain is created, but currently it has no accounts in it. Let's start creating new user. To create new user, it's recommended to be in such domain where user should be stored. Again, go to the plus sign menu and select new user. Fill in all details and save it. Currently, only one alias is allowed to be stored, but we will modify it later on. A user has been created. What you can do is to select user account type and switch from user to administrator or domain administrator. Of course, it's also recommended to check account features and select which features should be available for a particular account. To add additional aliases for this user, just go here to aliases and click to at alias. You can create as many aliases as you really need and they are not counted into the license. So save it and we can move to create a new group. Groups are great for easy sharing not only group for items like calendars, tasks and so on, but they can also be configured to act almost as a mailing list, which allows you to send email to group email address and contact all members of a group with one single message. One more, groups are necessary for our brand new feature team chat, so let's create one. As previously, we will go to the plus menu and create new group. Specify the group name and save it. Okay, the group is created, but now let's configure it. Of course, I will start a group sharing to create a public folder for the group. Enter the public folder name, go down. There is also the group email delivery, which will deliver automatically all the messages coming to the group email address directly to the group. But I'd like to deliver all messages to members individually. I also would like to create a team chat or enable team chat and what else I would like also to populate global address list with all members. This will allow me to find any member inside the group right from the contact list. So let's save it and now we have to invite several members. Go to members and add member. Well, the group can consist from different user types. It can be a user, it can be the whole domain, for example, and also it can come from different domains, actually. 
So I prefer to have everybody inside my domain as a member of this group. So that's why I can't really change it here to have a list of all domains and have to go back. Select which domain should be there and add the whole domain. This is how the domain will look like. If you prefer to have another member, but not the domain, go to Add Members again, select User for example from different domain, select several users or groups, doesn't really matter, or even resources for example, and add all those users into the group. Well, and that's it. Once you will go back to your domain account list, you may find that the group you have just created is not listed here. Well, what happened? The thing is that the default filter is made for users only. So you have to go here to type and select all types to see all the accounts which are really created within the domain. What else belongs to Web Admin Basics is configuration of domain properties, setting limits or administering server settings. To set domain properties like administrator account, unknown users behavior or selecting domain features, go to properties of the domain. Here you can also set other aliases of domain. In the limits tab, you can define max account or message size for users of this domain. Or you can continue to white labeling, for example, and customize web interfaces for this domain. More information about white labeling can be found in our other video about white labeling in ISOP server. So, now let's move on to server settings. In the server settings, you can manage login and password policy, work with host names and Smart Discover. By the way, we have also separate video of Smart Discover and the whole DNS process. Or manage SSL certificates of a server. And yes, ISORB have implemented Let's Encrypt certificates into the web admin interface. So once you will go to add, you can actually ask for free Let's Encrypt certificate pretty easily. And last thing is API console. Here you have access to all other important configurations of ISORB server. But as well, the API console is also covered in our separated video of API console and other advanced tools of administering ISOP server. So thank you very much for your attention and see you later. Bye.